Hi everyone, thanks for watching. Today I'm with Jody Miko, professional boxer and a veteran of 71 professional fights known as the One Man Riot during his career. And today we're going to be having a chat about his uh, life and career. So thank you for watching. And uh, Jody, thank you for taking the time, mate, to have a chat with me today. Appreciate no it. Thank you. That's all right. So, I mean, um, you know, starting at the beginning, Jody, I mean, that's, that's where I'm going to start with this, you know, you and boxing. You got into boxing quite late, didn't you? I mean, you got in like um, age 27, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? I laugh every time I ask this question. Yeah. Um, but the only reason I got into boxing was because I got sent to prison again. I thought, yeah. okay, prison again. I thought, 21 year old, uh, 27 year old. I thought, no way. So, uh, I went to a local boxing club, got a reference off a boxing coach. And, um, you know, I went, you know, I had no intention to box it. I make it out of charm aggression in the right direction. Basically, pulling the wool over his eyes. And the judge loved it. He uh, gave me a spending sentence. And that was that. But then, obviously, obviously, went amateur um, and boxed everyone, everyone again. I was at the super everywhere. I did what I want. Got pissed. Yeah, ate what I wanted. Did what I want. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it was a little laugh. But I didn't really intend to get into boxing, to be fair. Well, yeah, I had, I had three fights. I was, uh, I was 15, but I was absolute dog shit. I think I had five fights, every single one. We got stopped in two of them. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so okay. I and uh, and obviously your brother was was like a good a good pro, wasn't he? You know, yeah, back he in the nineties. Um, did he have any part to play in, in you getting into boxing, or was that like no, a lot, of, no, a lot of people think he yeah, no, a lot of people think he, he did, but he didn't. To be fair, unfortunately, um, you know, to be fair. He's a bit obviously a bit older than me. I obviously had my dad, obviously my brother and we were four, uh, obviously early on in life sort of thing, and shared me and my sister later on. So there's a big age gap. Um, so no, he didn't have any um, inkling. I mean, he talked about football, that was pretty good, but other than that, no, he didn't have any um, anything to do with boxing. Yeah. And then obviously, I mean, obviously, Jody is, you know, is, is well known, like in the public, um, that you were in and out of prison and stuff like that before boxing. Now, one of the things is, I don't want to sort of dwell on that today, because, you know, there's other things I want to I want to talk about. But I mean, just for everyone watching this, can you give us like a little little overview on like, um, you know, what, what happened with that and like you're in and out of prison and everything? You know what? I... I couldn't tell you why it all happened. Obviously, I said it's blood fighting, to be fair. And obviously, that's why I fell into boxing. But he was never selling drugs or robberies or robbing people down and stuff. It was all for violence. Like I say, I just love battering bouncers. The bigger, the better. It's just a challenge sort of thing. Um, the crazy thing was, is I think I wanted everyone to speak. I thought about, oh, God, Johnny Meek is mental, isn't he? The right nuts. So I remember running through a town centre with an axe. Chase a load of lads. I mean, if you stop, I wouldn't have hit him with it. I'd, I'd probably shit myself. Oh no, what am I doing? I don't fancy like 15 years sticking one, in it, you know, sticking axe in his head. But yeah, it's, as I say, we just wanted to be someone, I suppose. That's where it come from. Obviously, when I actually found boxing, that's obviously a idea. Of, like say, even now, you know, even now, like I'm, I'm boxing professional for what five years, six years. I mean, it must be yeah, it must be about six years since I lost uh, lost a British license. And uh, people still remember I was now sort of thing, so I did what I wanted to do sort of thing in boxing. Yeah. I just wish I didn't do that in real life sort of thing. But, uh, but it is what it is. Uh, yeah, I say I was, I was just a tear away, you know. I was yeah. well, I got bullied. I got bullied at young age, uh, and I turned into bullying the bully. They still bullying the bullies, and, and like I say, <laughs> so it went from there to there. Yeah. And I mean, do you think that, that boxing was one of those things that sort of obviously it turned your life around? Um, 100%, by the, 100%, yeah, 100%, yeah. yeah. By the uh, there was, obviously, there was one time where uh, after um, I, obviously I lost a British license uh, when I got sent away the last time. Uh, but to be fair, I passed call on me. Um, I don't know, it's a blame. No, I'm not going to blame it. Was, it. It was me. I went to the pub and Iraqi kid, listen, please don't think one minute to race. I've got friends of all different creeds and colours. Um, a racket that uh, smacked my mate. Anytime we grab those rackets, you know, basically trying to count it down. He turned around and smacked around the end of the bottle. Ended up getting done uh, for, uh, uh, well, I think she was trying to for aggravated racial assault. Um, anyway, that ended up getting sent to prison for it, and obviously, uh, that's why I lost the British license. I was a retiring, so I could have one last fight. Uh, the funny thing was, I had the last fight on the, uh, on the Saturday night, I got sent down on the Monday. Uh, I quite jailhouse rock. 
yeah, yeah. So that, that's the story behind it. it. I mean, it's good for you to sort of um, shed some light on it from, from your point of view, you know what I mean? Because you always hear everyone else's point of view and it's, it's, it's good to hear your point of view on, on what happened with that. And I mean, talking about your, your, your boxing career itself, obviously you had a lot of fights, you know, 71 fights, obviously with the British board and more otherwise. Um, but I mean, you always put like a smile on people's faces. I mean, that's one of the biggest things I remember, like when you, when you were fighting was you always, you know, you always had a smile, like always had the crowd going, laughing and having, you know, having a good time watching you fight. I mean, how do you sort of stay so positive like that and just sort of have a good time with it all? <laughs> to be honest, I was shit at boxing, so I had to do something, didn't I? Uh, no, I was, I was, do you know what? I was, my, my little thing in boxing, like I say, it sounds ridiculous. And uh, like I say, a lot of people may think, you know, I'll be speaking crap, but in, you know, um, I know one of the greatest boxers. I could take a, the best thing I had was a decent chin. Um, you know, I'm not, I don't like speaking one of these people, like, you know, speaking crap sort of thing, you know. Trying to sound me something different. I'm not. I was never, never was. A decent chin. Uh, so my, my, my thing was. I, I mean, I was a journeyman. I couldn't sell a ticket. I couldn't fill a telephone box. No point myself winning. I win, I lose money. Um, so my little thing was, uh, you know, I met people laugh, have a giggle. Uh, if people went away having a laugh, uh, laughing, you know, having fun and stuff like that, that was my, that was my win. That was. So to be fair, I won both fights. But yeah, I said the best of mine. They'd say. Well, and saying on it, so a different, different thing. Makes sense. It does make sense. But I mean, you know, what was your like mentality going into fights, though? Because um, I mean, were you going in there sort of really aiming to win, or were you sort of going into you know mostly have a good time and just sort of see how it goes? Laugh, have a laugh. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's funny actually because my wife always says she's uh, even a laugh you do. She says obviously, uh, see so you win. You have you no know, first thirty seconds of it. You think. And you know you are or not. Uh, and he says, she says, um, it's like, piss if you're not going to win. And what's well, fair, I, I don't think I did, because like I say, I just, um, I, I, like I say, I didn't really want to win most of the time. You know, excuse me, like I say, I just wanted to entertain, have a laugh, and, and just, be, just be daft just for me. <laughs> And I mean, obviously, um, during that time, you, you would have had like all different different encounters with ref, referees. I mean, I remember when you were fighting, you you know, you had some funny sort of back and forth with some banter with some of the, the referees. I mean, tell us a bit about that. I mean, what were referees like? I mean, were they sort of like, oh, God, it's, it's him? Or, or did they sort of join in with the, with the banter <laughs> well, a bit? It made me laugh at that because it made me laugh a bit because uh, a few times the refs of the team have shown it. Uh, and say, my Spanish say, oh, for fuck's sake, I hope I ain't got you. The amount of time they heard the ref say that was hilarious. I remember um, the first fight I come back, obviously after being banged up, was uh, obviously the Bieber license. I bought the kid called Ander Osgold, the Turkish Olympian. Bear in mind, I was unfit here, shattered a lot. Of I mean, I had like seven weeks, to be fair, it was fast. Uh, I shouldn't really watch the kid. Um, and then for here, yeah. Uh, it was it. I think I actually dropped with a body shot when a few times I've been, I've been down. Oh my God. I'll tell you what, if I get hit with an axe in the ribs, and they were, I just had proper clung on to him after that. And the referee said, in, bear in mind, it was six threes as well. Um, the referee says, I think the fifth round, the sixth, it might be the sixth, Joey, Karen Holding says, I'm going to disqualify you. Oh no, no, I'm lying. He says, you're going to lose a point. <laughs> so I'm fucking five points down anyway. Another point's not going to matter, is it? Don't you fucking want? <laughs> I was like, I gave him a rat up to death at the fight as well. Yeah. Another funny one was as well, he's one of our Welsh people, uh, Son Joslin. Uh, a box of kid called, uh, a kid called uh, Ander Osgur. I was like, all right, what? Uh, sorry, Ricky Powell. Um, the good kid he was. He was, uh, I think he had, he had, at the time, I think he had five, one five. And not most of them out, including a kid who shot me in uh, Tenerife. Um, I know um, oh, Saniger, Chris Saniger was, uh, was manager at the time. He said to Carl Greaves at the time, There's no point you uh, putting him in. He says, uh, This is Saniger's cows. There's no point putting him in because uh, you know, you're, not on, you're not obviously the other kid out, and you know, uh, who Joe lost to. He uh, said, so Listen, Joe on farm that night, trust me. I was like, lost a stone in. Uh, I mean, like 36 hours, I was I've done it away. And I, um, this is, if I say, Joe, do you want to, right? And I messed up about the fight, I sent it to fight. And after the fight, um, Sonny Johnson said to me, he says, uh, Jody, he says, you could have probably beat if you wanted to. 
I says, do you think for one minute I was going to try beating him? He's fucking five or six and oh. They've only got five and months. You know, if you knock everyone out, what the hell can I do? Imagine, imagine if I beat someone out without a new record. Okay, no. Like I said, I can't fill I can't fill a telephone box and screwed me to my game. Obviously, um I mean you you probably get asked this a lot, Jody. I mean this you know, this next question you you know you've probably heard before, but I mean in terms of like toughest fights and things like that, and the reason I ask that is because obviously watching you know, watching you fight, I mean all the time it, it looked like you were having a good time and in some ways you made it look easy, you know what I mean? But like obviously you've you've been in some tough fights. I mean, yeah. what would you say was like the toughest fight that you had? I would say, obviously, Callum Johnson, he, he perfect me in the second round. Um, but I managed to get through it. Like I say, again, again I wrapped him up. I gave him more colours than he more than give him, I think. Um, but yeah, uh, that was a tough fight. I, I, another one I would say most of you have ever done um, is Joe McIntyre. I really hated him. I'm surprised he didn't do what he did. Uh, he did more. Um, but yeah, I had a few tough ones. I can't, I can't be an Asian kid. I boxed an Asian kid. I think it's Pete going on. And um, it was hilarious. Well, it's funny, really, because um, you kept catching me all the time. And for some, uh, I didn't realise it was Southpaw. I thought I was fucking boxing news the week after. No one kept catching me. <laughs> I didn't realise after the brush. I didn't realise the Southpaw. I thought I was boxing the week after, honestly. <laughs> but, uh, and, and the other That's thing it. is, Jody, I mean, um, like you know, when we spoke, like even on Facebook and stuff like that. I mean, you, you know, you're you're like a nice guy. You're like a sound sound bloke. You know what I mean? But when people meet you, I mean, like, what do they expect? I mean, do, do you find like, you know, you you get judged and stuff for like the prison or, or like are most people all right or like how does it how does it go? Because obviously people see you in the ring and they sort of get an idea, don't they? Think oh, like he's this crazy guy, and you meet you in the flesh and they're like you're all right. You know what I mean? So I mean, like, what how does it go with most people when you meet fans and stuff? A lot of people. Actually, uh, a surprise, obviously, especially people that have the right reputation. Um, but I'd like say, you know, you, you think of I was my mum, my mum, bless her, bless her soul. Uh, she should always say to me, she's all right, all right, son. This is, but the thing is, you get a reputation, it's, it's easy, easy to get a reputation, but it's hard to get rid of it. And I'll tell you what, it's always stuck with that. But it is what it is, you know, people think what they want, I don't really care too fair, you know. I don't know people like, obviously. I don't know if was all right, but if it don't, you know, it doesn't affect my life. As long as my wife and kids are all right, and my family, you know, it is what it is. Well, mm -hmm. I say that a lot of people are surprised when they meet me. They think, yeah, it's not bad, here. I, I, I tell you what, yeah, I give a little story to this, actually. Um, obviously, not box related. I um, over a really bad time with uh, my oldest daughter's mum, and uh, obviously, she played on the violence and stuff like that. I mean, Bear in mind, all this violence was against uh, women and kids and stuff like that. I've always been, to be fair, I always try to be the best dad I can be. Uh, my kids get everything they can give them, sort of thing. Um, but anyway, um, so I went to, uh, obviously, this, this uh, break, the social work, sorry, social work, when we all have to do some sort of, like, paper, you know, because you go through court to get access to it. And uh, she says, oh, uh, when's the best time for you? I says, well, you know, I was at work at the time. She says, um, well, what, 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 you know, you tell me the best time for you. It don't really matter to me. She went, well, what, what about your boss? I don't worry, my boss is really family which he very he is. Um, so listen, you tell me the best time for you over there. Anyway, so I went and met this uh, social worker. I know she, she like, really appreciated and stuff like that. And I started chatting away to her, obviously, obviously things that she had. She went, I'm so glad you, you couldn't do me today. I'm going to stay here. I says, uh, you had this bad person like but yeah, yeah so I was totally wrong. <laughs> that, that was that was something like a social work, something like obviously well, well up in the obviously community sort of thing. But yeah, a lot of people uh, like say judge, but it is what it is. And I mean, obviously I haven't had like, you know, the amount of fights that you've had because you're 71 as a pro and then you've I know you've had more like unlicensed and things like that. Um I mean, what's like the proudest moment of your career? Like like the thing that you sort of remember and you just think, you know, that was that was the time that was like what you say the pr you're most proud of in your career. Probably, probably taking the piss out of prison as they were box Carl Johnson. I loved it. It was hilarious. I mean, little scruffy kid from Scunthorpe taking the piss out of Naz. <laughs> Come on. It was ace. It was, that was quite funny. That was a good moment. <laughs> it, the funny thing was, in the hotel after was even better because uh, I put something on Facebook. Uh, our local paper wrote up and says, um, <laughs> see, 
no, no winning title for me. It's, like, it's, it's a funny moment it does for me. But yeah, uh, our local paper on Wilpie says, uh, Joey says, uh, what do you think to Cam Johnson's comments? You know, speak, uh, power hurts, but speed kills. I was actually super heavyweight in the amateur. I boxed one of the Cam's friends. And uh, it's obviously power hurts being super heavyweight, but speed kills. They pitied it to Nazar, isn't it? The same as some bird, wasn't it? Anyway, this report was howling. And, I cannot put that. I said, I'll put on Facebook then. I put on Facebook. Let's kick old Jason Jones, it's old Callum. And Cal rung Naz up. And he said, that's his fight. We know it's out of Naz. And he says, so then, he says, let's just put on Facebook. I think he thought I was a bullshit. I told him word for word, exactly like he told you. And he was howling. He was absolutely pissed himself. He went, you know what? He says, he says Callum will up all the I've told him, you're a funny guy. You're a funny guy. I said, that's probably one of the best moments in boxing, that one. <laughs> Loved it. Yeah, I mean, your career was full of some great moments. I, I remember a yeah. fight when um, I think when you walked out to Barbie Girl, like, and it, it was on Box Nation, yeah. but I can't remember. Yeah, I can't, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah I'll, 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 uh, Ju- uh, Frankie, Frank Evans was fighting Junior Witter, and even Frank Evans, even Frank Evans is mentioned a few times on Facebook about that being one of the funny times in boxing. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I, I boxed my Shinko in a lot of times, a really good kid as well. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's funny that one. I, I mean, obviously they do it in the uh, pro, in the license club to uh, YMCA. I mean, I'm looking, I'm looking at what my boss really is. Uh, I always take my van wherever I go. I always take my van. I was at work here in my van. I thought, I'm going to crack tonight. I says, uh, well, yes, yeah, so I went, went in my van, got my eye that out, my eye vest, and uh, me, me uh, pouch like, but what I do, and walked out to YMCA <laughs> just for the crack. <laughs> Oh, yeah. brilliant. I mean, there's, you know, there's never been another like you, Jodie. I mean, before or, before or since, you know what I mean? That's class, that is. And I mean, um, obviously, like, if you had any advice for, like, for young boxers coming into the sport now, uh, and I know this is, a bit, this is a bit of a strange one, but this is the thing is I'm trying to ask some questions that, that you did are a bit different. What, like, advice would you give to, like, young lads who are, like, coming into the sport, like, just starting out maybe amateur, you know, just turning professional, like that type of thing. Choose your, well, one of the main things I'd say, choose your promoter, right? You know, your manager, trainer. Not, as I said, promoter, promoter, manager, trainer. Because uh, there's a lot of dogs in boxing. Well, boxing is a dog as well. Um, I was very lucky. Um, I had Carl Grease, and like I said, I very appreciate what he did. He's one of the best managers by far. Um, <clears throat> like I say, you know, isn't like saying he took, took his money, that was it. He didn't try to rob you or anything like that. There's, there's people out there who absolutely rape you. Um, especially if you're on the road sort of thing, because obviously you, you fight every week. Um, but yeah, choose your manager wisely. I mean, a lot of these kids get into boxing, unfortunately, they think, you know, all right, I'm, I'm going to have a shot on this side another. Well, let's say, like me, the cat from the telephone box. You have to you have to sell tickets in boxing. If you can't sell tickets, you're wasting your time. Because um, you th- when well, you think about it, you know, if you're boxing for free, you're getting £1,000. Obviously, then obviously you have to pay um, obviously what say another two hundred pound expense, twelve hundred pound uh, plus put money in the, the sh- most shows uh, before you think I can get no wages. So it's, it's a lot of tickets you can't do that. You know most of the time, let's say the opponents are probably in more majority of the time. I'd say majority of the time the opponents are probably in more than the um, the old fighter. But, you know if you, if you can't sell tickets, you go to show uh, a prime example was uh, it's quite well ironic really was um, Dex Spellman was going for uh, Carl managed him it was winning his title and we carried him up um, and so I see he, he said what he did and like I say he had a big damage career I don't know I think you know I'd say but yeah and I said to him I said I'll be alright I'll be alright road stick on the road I'll be alright I said I don't think they sell tickets it's come for dog shit for doing tickets it's a nightmare um, anyway, um, Deck, I think his first four or five fights, um, he, I think he probably, admit, he probably didn't make any money at all, you know, but he stuck with it and uh, he started doing well and he was selling bundles of tickets, you know, hand on a fist. You know, so obviously then he started probably making a few quid, obviously won the English title and the real well. So, like I say, if you think all it is a boxer and loads of money, you best uh, <laughs> get out of shit, kid, because most, it's very rare that most people do. Hmm. Yeah, which which does lead me to another thing, Jody. I mean, you know, in the past, you've been quite sort of open about like you know the corruption, some of the corruption in boxing, and uh, and I mean, you you know, you've basically said it in like one or two other interviews I've seen that you were basically told by certain you know certain promoters um, 
you know, don't go too hard on this kid and, you know, things like that. I mean, how much does that sort of thing go on? And I mean, what, like, what, what's, what's the score with that? Possible. It happens all the time. Uh, but I think it's like I say, it's boxing. If you've got a kid who can sell tickets, you know, he only get beat, you know, because if he starts to beat, he, he, he only lose money. You know, and the day, when you put a shot, you're putting, like, I don't know, say, five or six fights on. Um, you know, you, you, you can't have, like, um, free gear on the show, can you? You know what I mean? Try to sell tickets. You know, you want decent kids, don't you? So you have to build the record up, and um, that's what it is. So... Mm. Yeah. That's it. It's, it's, in, in our aspects, where money's involved in sport, you always get bent things, aren't you? Really, uh, dodgy things you know. Yeah. And I mean, the other thing with that is, like, I've, I've heard before, like, around the scene, that, like, when, you know, in some of your fights, like, you weren't really training and stuff like that. I mean, you were just sort of getting in, just giving it a go and, and stuff like that. I mean, how true is that, Julie? I mean, like, what when you were fighting, what was your training regime like? Actually, where, where like? Was it? No, where, where the British license, I train with NSO. I really did because the thing is, it, it is a different game uh, when yeah. you're on a British body control. Um, so I really train. I mean, even the German needs to be fit to go through the round tech shots I did, stuff like that. I did train, but uh, with regards to when I got there, yeah, most of the time I didn't want to fight. I didn't want to obviously, I didn't want to win fights. What's the point of me winning fights? Because the thing is, I was there to be beat, you know. And uh, like I say, I can't really tell if I'm a box up. No point in me being. I didn't, get into, I didn't get into boxing so I was to start winning because I, I, I can't... I mean, every time I uh, boxed at home, I mean, here's one for you. When I boxed at home, when I sold the tickets, I, I did tickets, I think it was uh, nine times of the tickets, uh, I ended up with a record of eight wins, one draw, no losses when I did tickets. Work it out yourself. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a sack of shit. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the last, the last fight I had was with Sam Cousins. Uh, and that was well. Well, I was quite a decent fight, and I said to uh, I was said to Carl, "Now I want Sam." Went, really? Yeah, it'd be good scrap. It'd be good scrap. No point of me going out on like you know knocking some little foreigner out or getting some like some dog shit. It's pointless. You know, it's not what I was. So. Yeah, yeah, it says it all, really, mate. I mean, it, you know, it, it does say it all. And I mean, um, obviously, moving on from there, let's talk about a couple of your fights. You mentioned uh, Callum Johnson. Obviously, you know you, you fought some, you know you fought some big names in your career, uh, yeah. Frank Rulioni as well. Um, I mean, let's talk about those two fights. What, what was your fight with Callum Johnson like, um, from your point of view? That was just, it was surreal, really. I remember, I remember being in prison, um, and uh, on the back beyond the six interview it was Callum Johnson. I still always remember this day. I actually said it to him. Oh, so I remember looking at him, thinking, "I will fight him one day. I will fight him." I went in prototype, and uh, yeah, I ended up doing it. I was like, get in there. Yeah, he, he's a nice kid, he was. Uh, like I say, he's only from, Link he's from Lincoln, which is just a row for me. Um, but yeah, he's he, he was good, though. Like I say, uh, well, Ricky Burns, all title of the card, Brad Reed, he was, he was obviously, he found out, yeah, it was great. Yeah, the only problem with that one, it was, uh, I was a floater. I had to get warmed up twice, and the uh, thing I was wearing, it, it didn't happen. <laughs> but yeah, right. I still yeah. love that one. It's yeah, a dream, dream come true in a way, yeah. And I mean, um, what about what about Frank um, Bullione? I mean, you know, what, what was that fight like? Because I know going into your fight, you, you fought him early in his career. He did a few stoppages and, he, and everything before he fought you. I mean, what was your fight with him actually actually like? Do you know what? I fought with guys, don't we? Uh, it's funny because, like I say, he had fought one for not for out on the first round. And there was Barry Jones commentating where it was. Don't blink, you'll miss it. And uh, I, remember laying this, I remember laying in the change before, and I've been at work that, that day. I was absolutely bollocks. I couldn't be asked. I, I just threw it anywhere. So I was in bed. And um, yeah, I remember all his fans. Yeah, I always saw sort of on the ticket. Uh, and, uh, all his fans started singing. I was like, I just woke up. He's like, take a grab of coke. I was like, come on, let's have it. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, but I, I love that fight. It's funny because. Um, I've been training uh, with a guy called Keith Walker. We, I've been looking at things. And, uh, and like I say, uh, it, 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 we've gone through a lot of things. I was thinking, Jesus, if he catches me, obviously, you know, if he had phone for it's not got three out. The only person that went this to was Ryan Clark. And I thought, Jesus, he, he caught me, I think, in the first round. I thought, really? Is that it? Nah. 
I put my hands out of the way. I thought, let's take one. Let's take one. And then he hit me again, proper flush. I thought, wow, brilliant. Is that it? Get in there. Happy days. Not knocking me. I lost a chance. Looking brilliant. I thought, wow. Yeah, to be fair, I've been thinking, bollocks. I'm in here. And uh, yeah, I thought he could be right. Banger here. I thought he was like, you know, next Mike Tyson's at me. I tell you what, I didn't even hear that out, to be fair. No, I don't think he could, honestly. That's how it's not been disrespectful to him. He's a lovely kid. I remember going down to watch him uh, with all these fans uh, you know, a year after sort of thing. He was a right little crack it was, but yeah. He had a big good hit hard, mate. <laughs> He's good luck. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, you know, one of the things about this that, that that sort of makes me think of is, um, do you think that, like being in prison, some of the things that happened to you in your, in your younger days and things, do you think that give you a mental edge? over like some of the boys you, you were facing or do you think it just didn't make a difference or, or do you think it actually helped you in, in some ways? You know, uh, I, I don't think for, for a moment I'm disrespecting any fire it's been, you know, being injured now. all but by my mentality, you know, uh, you know, I've got doctor on side, what's supposed to happen? Yeah. You know, you're not just putting a knife out and stab me, you're not going to shoot me, is he? <laughs> it's true, isn't it? It, it is, yeah, yeah, 100%. He's got a pad of gloves on, you know, He's not in a bar, is he? He's not going to stick his glass in my face. You know, he's yeah. not going to come, aren't you? He's not booting me. I'll stick an elbow in my face. He's going to punch me. So, you know, yeah. it's going to happen, not you? Yeah, that's it. Well, that's it, yeah. It's, it's a good way to look at it. I mean, you know. Um, and then, you know, since obviously losing your licence and, and, like, obviously, you know, it's, it is very unfortunate um, what's happened there. And obviously, the way it's, to some extent, the way it's been handled, um with that, but I mean, you're doing some like unlicensed fights. I've seen, I saw an MMA fight that, that you were in as well, and so there's obviously different things going on. But I mean, like, what, what's happening with you with your fighting these days? I mean, like, where are you at now with it all? Uh, I'm not having an offer now, I'm just a fat pissed head, fat pissed head family one. <laughs> no, um, I like say, uh, I'm to be fair, I started getting to coaching amateurs. Um, I like say, I'm not fighting, but actually, I'm done now. Um, uh, I started coaching amateurs, I've been working away quite a lot of recent times. Uh, obviously, we did two charity show. We, I did two charity show. I only did one every year. The young boy passed away. Um, young Josh Catty. Um We we we, uh, we raised a few quid for his kids. He, he was 21. He passed away. And uh, uh, I can't. I don't. I can't remember the exact thing it was. He had, he had like absolute brain. He popped. And he passed away. Unfortunately, he was a lovely kid. I might say he used to watch me box. Uh, and his dad's always uh, been very good to me with regards to work and stuff. So we raised, uh, we did, we done two so far. We raised uh, thirteen grand for his kids, his two young kids. He had, he had a he had a little uh, three year old daughter, and uh, when he passed away, his uh, partner was three pregnant at the time. So that little boy doesn't see him now. Well, he's never seen him, shall I say? Um, but yeah, so we done two little things. So I always said to uh, my my boss, like I always make sure his names obviously remembered sort of thing. So yeah, so we're still doing them. Uh, but like I say, yeah. Uh, the fighting's gone now, really. So, yes, hopefully, get into coaching, coaches, and those who still doing the things for Josh. Uh, I'll see you in the days. Yeah. And obviously, you know, you say about coaching and, and things like that. I mean, do you, do you think that, like, um, you can help, you know, young lads who are maybe sort of going down the same path, like the same sort of path? I know it's almost a bit of a cliche, isn't yeah. it? But... No, 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 no. I'll tell, no, I'll tell you. I know where you come from, yeah. No, uh, well, the thing is, to be honest with you, I'm not the greatest boxing coach. I did, I started doing a few talks. One of my, my long term goals was love to get involved with um, races of art. Was he help uh, you know, to to try and keep young kids on, on get young kids on straight and narrow? Because about signing Connie and Gay, um all, all my all my offenders being for violence, you know. So I've never heard nothing out my out my offending. So, you know, end of the day, you know, it's not to be selling drugs and a few quid or you know, robbing people and a few were doing that. So my in hindsight my uh, offending is being for nothing. If I can stop some young kids going for rails, you know, like it, obviously I, I had a little bit, uh, and obviously then it's been beneficial. In my time, obviously, it's been worthwhile. You know, because at the minute, it's not been yeah. worthwhile. I, I know it's not getting caught, it was. I've always said that. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And I mean, to be honest, that, that's one of the things I hope, you know, come out of this video as well is, you know, is some lessons like that, that, that you know, that you've learned. And, um, you know, I mean, that's what part of my vision, like for this. But I mean, um, so that's, that's sort of the future aim then. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. And I mean, 
you did some refereeing um, for for Bieber, yeah. British and Irish. Um, I mean, what what's happening with that? Like, you still doing that now, or like, we must? No, I'm not going to be dis disrespectful, or dis no, disrespectful to them, but um, no, nah, it's not for me. Um, I, I still I still refereed um, the white collar license, what I want to call him. We have two friends, good friend Ali Burr, um, and uh, my friend up in Scotland, Thomas Melville. I still do their shows, uh, but. Nah, I'm not worried about that. I'd free, free anymore. Yeah, but it it must be it must have been interesting for you though to see like the other side of it because I mean obviously you had some some great laughs with referees and stuff like that and then obviously to be to be in their shoes it, you know it, it must have been interesting to to sort of experience that. Years ago, um, you know, boxing was in schools and things and 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 I think I think you've you've talked a little bit about this before, but like I mean. Do you think that, that it should be brought back, like, it, you know, and they would be more sort of disciplined? And I, again, I know it's a little bit of a sort of a cliche, but I mean, you know, like if you'd had the opportunity to, to box in, like in school or whatever, do you think you would have still ended up, you know, fighting in the street and all, and all that type of thing? Or do you think it would have changed anything? See, to be fair, yeah, I probably would have, because obviously, like I say, I, I found boxing, obviously, one in schools at 15. Um, I just couldn't be asked, I'm going to be here. Um, so I, said, you know, I didn't bother. Um, but yeah, I, I do think if boxing in schools, it will it will get to some people. It, if boxing is not going to fix everyone, but you know, and uh, I do think boxing uh, gives people opportunities and things like that. You know, it's amazing. You know, I, I think the opportunity boxing has given me has been. You know, I, don't, I don't think in life I've never achieved. Otherwise, you know, I mean, we're boxing Pakistan, so speak to the weekend and stuff like that. You know, obviously, we Naz. Like, even like uh, me and we have Ender, Ender McAnally at um, uh, a box show in Neath. You know, it's, it's crackers. You know, I'm just like, it a little daft old me from the rough counter state. It's giving me some like, real good opportunities. So, yeah. And I think if boxing actually does get into school, it, it, it only can benefit people. You know, you say you're not going to, you know, read every, everything of what it is. But, you know, I, I do believe if, if you go into boxing, uh, boxing to school, be some sort of benefit. It's got to be some benefit. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Well, I mean, you know, really, Jody. I mean, we 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 we've covered some like some really good stuff there. Do you know what I mean? And I mean, uh, I I mean, I had uh, like a few, some questions you answered like without me asking them to be honest. So I mean, so it's, mm -hmm. I think I think it's gone really well. Yeah. Well, like I say, I mean, once again, I, I know I said earlier, but I do appreciate you taking the time to you know to have a chat with me today. Because um, I know you're busy with, with for your family and everything like that, so thank you for thank you for taking the time, mate. I appreciate it. I do. Oh, thanks, thanks for inviting me on. Yeah.